Welcome to this Microsoft Mini CPD all about Microsoft Excel and how as a class teacher you can use it to support your assessment and to inform future planning. Excel is a really handy tool in the Office 365 suite. You can use it to record and collate a wide range of data. You can also use it to analyse your calculations and to identify trends. Finally, you can also share data overuse with colleagues and external audiences, either as raw data or as tables and charts. This is what an Excel spreadsheet will look like. We're currently on the Home tab. As you can see, there are a number of features in the Font section, same as you would have in Word, where you can change the font, the size, the colour, highlight. You can also, over here, change the text direction, so it can go horizontal, vertical or diagonal. You can also wrap the text so it fits in within the cell, or if you want to join cells, you can merge and center them. You're also able to insert new cells, rows or columns, delete the same and format them. Here is an example of how you might as a teacher use Excel. I've set up the start of a spreadsheet. I'm going to add in now some names of pupils and I'm just going to call them by letters of the alphabet. And because the names are often important, what I can also do is highlight this column, come across to view and I can freeze that pane. So I'm going to freeze the first column so even if I move my spreadsheet across, those names will always be there. Then what I'm going to do is just add in some scores for what they scored during the first week. And let's imagine this is a tables test out of 10. So they had a mixture of scores in week one, but week two was very consistent. Pupil A got eight, but actually so did everyone else. So I can drag that score down and it will fill it in for me. Let's say there was one child who didn't do so well that week. I can change just their individual score. What I'm then going to do is just add in, in random, some other scores for week three. Now this is quite useful. I can see each week's scores, but what I'd really like is a total. So what I'm going to do is come over to this cell. I'm going to go back to home and I'm going to come up to this icon here, which allows me to put in a formula. I could use sum, I could use average, and there's other varieties of choices, but this time I'm going to go with sum. As you can see, the spreadsheet automatically assumes I want the sum of those three weeks, so I'm going to enter and say yes, and it's done that calculation for me. Again, if I click on this cell and I drag down, it will copy that formula for me. What I can then do is say, actually, what I want to do in this column is I want to add a filter. So I'm going to click here and add a filter. What this drop down allows me to do as a teacher, I might say, oh, I can see there's a range of scores. But what I want to know is who are the children perhaps who are struggling a bit at the moment might need a bit of extra support. I just want to see those children. So I can see it's pupil A and it's pupil A. If I want to have all the children back, I just select all and I have all the scores back. What I can also decide to do is use the same filter icon to sort them either from largest to smallest, but actually for assessment, I'm going to look at smallest to largest. Who are those children that I need to support? As we just saw, E and A are now at the top because they've got the lowest scores, whereas actually pupil C, I can be fairly confident that they're
Here's an example of one of our Excel assessment journeys, and this is looking at Year 4 reading. For each of the objectives, we rate the children either at working towards, apprentice level, or a number two, they've mastered the end of year expectations because they know it, understand it, can explain it and demonstrate it. And for some of the children, they may be given a three, which shows they're exceeding and being a deeper learner. Here's what the spreadsheet looks like. As you can see, we've got the pupils names here, but then we also have data about how they did and what they attained in year R and year two. There's then a series of subgroups. So if as a teacher, I wanted to look at how my pupils with SEND were faring in year four in reading, I could look at just those two pupils and look at which objectives they were exceeding in and mastering. As a teacher, this also allows me to see not only how well the children are doing and in some places exceeding, but it also gives me an idea, perhaps, as to objectives within the curriculum I've yet to teach. So, for example, in column O, I know that at the moment we haven't done a lot of work retelling fairy tales, myths, legends or traditional tales orally. Nor have we done, in row S, recognising some different forms of poetry. So I know that I need to plan that in during the rest of the year. I could also look at, for example, here in W, where it's looking at drawing inferences, that some of the children have got it, but some of them haven't. So which are the group that I might want to do a little bit of extra work with? Well, that's pupils A, F, I and K, because I've filtered it so it's just the ones showing. All of these scores add up to a total, and then the total is turned into a percentage. If you click on a cell, it will show you what the formula is here. But if I right click on it, it allows me to format the cells. Here you can see that I've selected percentage and I don't want it to any decimal places. This Microsoft Mini CPD was produced by the Digital Transformation Team at Cornerstone Church of England Primary School in Hampshire in the UK. If you'd like to find out more about how we're using a range of Microsoft tools, please contact either Henry Penfold, our digital leader, or myself, Tim Clark, our head teacher.